First up is an infinite money glitch. This method allows you to very quickly max out your gold to 100k or beyond. Now to do this, open bartering with a trader and select everything the trader has and then just drag it directly into your inventory. This adds the value of the items to the trader's gold and it doesn't subtract that value from your gold. Then you can sell the items back to the trader for gold using the bartering menu and oddly enough the trader's gold doesn't decrease by much either when you sell them back. You can do this over and over and both of your gold piles will increase each time. And the more items you drag across, the faster you can build both piles. And if your stack of gold wasn't enough, you can always use the old bag trick to take all of the trader's gold too. Now you've got two massive piles of gold. Thanks to KingWill272 who told me about this trick. Next up is the Monster Slayer Glaive. The Monster Slayer Glaive is a weapon that is probably overlooked because it doesn't do an incredible amount of damage for being a two-handed weapon, especially considering the other great options. But this glaive is actually great as a stat stick for ranged characters. Now similar to how the hunting short bow grants advantage on all attacks, even melee, this melee weapon provides two bonuses that the item doesn't even say it does. The weapon says that it deals an additional 1d4 damage against monstrosities, but that also applies to ranged attacks. So if you dual wield hand crossbows, you're getting an additional 2d4 damage against monstrosities if you wield this. Not only that, but the glaive also gives a 1d4 bonus to attack rolls against monstrosities, again, for ranged attacks as well. So you'll hit more often. And if that wasn't enough, this also applies to spells, not something you'd expect from the tooltip at all. And a nice bonus on top of that is that jump distance is increased by 5 feet, perfect for a spellcaster with annoyingly short jumping distance. And if you like that tip, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos. Next up is how to get the OP Myrmidon weapons the easy way. Now instead of using the trick to get your Myrmidon sent to jail and then looting their weapon from the evidence chest, you can just go to Larokin instead and defeat him and his Myrmidons. He can be found inside Ramazith's tower. To get there, just take the portal found in Sorceress Sundries. After you've defeated the Myrmidons and Larokin, long rest and upon your return, there will be pouches where the Myrmidons' corpses were. This gives you access to the Flail of the Vortex, the Trident of the Death, and the Scimitar of Cinder. Each of these weapons have powerful weapon actions, especially the Flail of the Vortex, which can stun a target for two turns. Since you aren't supposed to get these weapons, there are, of course, no attack animations for when you use them, so it does look a bit buggy. Next up is Hidden Hag Dialogue. You can get two different reactions from Auntie Ethel's corpse when you cast Speak with Dead, depending on if she's wearing her tarnished charm. If you cast Speak with Dead on the Hag, she'll talk to you even if you killed her, which already Already is odd because most corpses won't speak to their killers, but not only that, the tarnished charm seems to sort of tether her from death, keeping her kind of attached to her body. This tarnished charm reduces the DC of the wearer's death saving throws, and I guess this translates into this different dialogue which has Auntie Ethel communicating with you much easier than if her corpse didn't have it. Now with the charm she talks quite normally, well if you take the charm off her body before casting Speak with Dead, like most other corpses the words are sort of few and far between like they're struggling to speak. She also will answer the question, do you have any regrets when she's wearing the charm? Whereas if you took the charm off her body, she'll answer only one and you'll never know. Next up is how to get an ancient servant pet. This pet can deal a ton of damage by using multi-attack against frightened targets. It also applies mummy rot, which reduces maximum hit points and prevents healing. The source of frightened can also come from the mummy itself through dreadful glare, but ideally, you know, something like a great old one warlock with mortal reminder could spread it for the mummy so they could just use their multi-attack. To get this awesome pet you could become a level 11 cleric warlock or wizard for the spell but any class can actually get this spell through the crypt lord ring. This ring requires you to complete a quest chain that involves helping Thrumbo, a runaway zombie, defeat his master mystic carrion. You need to delve into the undercity and discover an ancient lair holding the secrets to defeating mystic carrion for good. Once you've discovered what's keeping him immortal and end it, you can end Mystic Carrion and Thrombo will give you this awesome ring. And next up is how to get the hag to join you in the final fight. In Act 3, there is a woman named Laura who claims her child is missing and was last seen at the Blushing Mermaid. But when interviewing the folks there, they said she was there alone and totally drunk, even threatened to stab people. Captain Grizzly even offers you gold to put Laura out of her misery since she's just becoming a danger to society. This is a really interesting
interesting question because it's really hard to tell who to believe. On one hand, you have an apparently desperate mother just looking for her child, and on the other hand, all the folks at the Blushing Mermaids say she's crazy. But if you decide to do as Captain Grizzly says and murder Laura, when you return to her for your reward, she'll start laughing maniacally and reveal that she is actually the green hag Auntie Ethel, and she did kidnap Laura's child. And if you let her keep the child, then she will offer you the guts and glory of a green hag in the final fight against the Netherbrain. And next up is advantage at the cost of a bonus action. This is possible thanks to two items that work well together. One, the Cloak of Cunning Broom, and two, the Eversight Ring. The Cloak of Cunning Broom causes you to create fog anytime you use Disengage. Enemies within the fog are blinded, which gives them disadvantage on their attack rolls and gives you advantage on your attack rolls against them. However, to prevent becoming blinded by the fog yourself, you'll need Eversight Ring, which makes you immune to blind. This way, for the cost of a bonus action, thanks to Cunning Action Disengage, you can use your bonus action to cause blind in an AoE, and your ranged teammates will also get advantage when attacking those blinded targets too. And to get the Eversight Ring, you'll need to head to the Morgan Act 2, which is just west of the House of Healing, and the Cloak of Cunning Broom can be purchased from Mattis in Last Light Inn if you convinced Roland to stay with the Grove in Act 1, and you helped save the Tieflings. And next up is the Shadow Mastiff Pet. This pet has Terrifying Howl, which frightens all beasts and humanoids for two turns, and Shadow Jaw Bite, which deals piercing damage and possibly knocks the target prone for one turn. This cool looking Shadow Pet is another minion that can be acquired through our friend Glut in the Myconid Colony. By speaking to Spa and offering to help fight the Dwergar, you can get Glut to join your party by talking to him. Glut has a spell called Animating Spores, which can be used on any monstrosity type creature's corpse to turn it into a spore servant. This Shadow Mastiff can be summoned by destroying all the torches surrounding an encampment in the ruined battlefield. Once you defeat it, carry its corpse back to the Underdark for Glut to reanimate. And next up is how to retrieve items behind barred doors the sneaky way. This is possible thanks to Find Familiar. If you summon a cat familiar, this pet can actually jump through bars and it can actually move stuff around. So one use case for this is at the Necromancy of Thay. Maybe you can't lockpick, so you summon this familiar to jump through the bars and then drag the book to you on the outside, completely circumventing the need to lockpick. So if you ever find a barred lock door that you can't lockpick, try sending a cat familiar through to drag whatever's on the other side through the door to you. And last, the amazing Hell Dusk Armor. To get this in Act 1, first go to the Emerald Grove and pick up the Mind Flayer Parasite from Nettie's room. We do this in order to ensure we trigger Raphael's appearance where we want him. Then go to the Broken Bridge with your party split. Send one character in alone towards the bridge and Raphael will appear. Switch to a character with a ranged attack and shoot him. He's going to disappear once you do that. Next, make sure your party is at least level 3 at this point because you'll need silence from either a bard, cleric, or circle of the land druid. Then head to the mountain pass. I split my group again and then just used invisibility on Gale to walk by the Gith Yankee and click to move to the next area. This will trigger a cutscene and then send you to your camp. And last, at camp, you're going to find Raphael. Cast silence on him and attack him repeatedly with non-lethal strikes turned on until he is knocked out. Once he is, you can loot the amazing Hell Dusk armor. 